welcome to another video. This time we're going to be covering using local or custom facts on Windows servers and how to set that up. So before we begin, you're going to need to use uh, get your environment set up from the first video. So the, this video here, how to manage Windows servers using WinRM, that's another bit video I've made. There's a little bit bigger. That's what you want to watch. Set your environment up. That will give you everything you need and because I'm going to carry on straight from that environment. So we are going to go through this entire gist here. Um, and before we do, let's just refresh ourselves. So this is where we were left off from the last video. We can just run. We can just literally run Windows now. This will then just set everything back for us, um, just to prove it's all, all working. We can see that Fresh this. So we're just going through. I've, I've deleted it all. I'm just recreating it all now. So we do a quick start. So we've got a temp file, we've got a folder, and in that folder we have a foo.txt file. And this is where we left ourselves off. We were using a local fact, uh, a local Ansible um, fact from the setup module just to tell us who the name was, what the name was. Right. So let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a quick chat about why we're going to bother doing this. Um, so if you manage a group of servers, Linux or Windows, um, Ansible will sometimes, you want to sometimes run Ansible on something that is specific about that server. Um, what having local fax does is it stops you trying to run some local command to register a bit of information to pull it out and then use that in your Ansible run. It's like extra processing. You can kind of do a lot of that up front and then just use it. So. Um, you know, custom facts can be very useful. You know, if you want to run Ansible specifically against the subset of servers that meet a particular condition, this is a very good way of doing it when those conditions aren't in the standard Ansible setup module. So today we're going to cover setting up custom facts in Windows. So all the configuration that we need to do to get that to work. We're going to look at the syntax of the PS1 file that we're going to use to generate our facts. So PS1 is a PowerShell script. So if you're into Linux, then this is like for me it took me a little while to get my head around and I didn't it took me a little while to get this working so you're shortcutting straight to something that's useful um, we're going to collect because I'm in AWS my Windows 2019 server is going to collect the region and the AMI ID I also collect like the um, instance type as well but we're not going to use that today um, we're going to use these facts in a template and then to extend it all at the end, we're going to collect a local environment variable, one from the remote server and one from the control node. And we're going to put them into the template as well to show you that you can actually pull out some other interesting information and use that to sort of make your server more unique with custom facts. So let's, a lot of this is based on the setup module. So let's just run the setup module and see what we get. So if you're familiar with this on Linux, you'll see a very similar output. Um, all it does is it just pulls back a whole load of information, like loads and loads. You've got, if we start at the top, we've got the architecture, what it is, the BAS versions. We've got distribution, so it's Windows 2019. We've got this Ansible environment section, which pulls out all the environment variables, and we're going to use that in a bit. Um, we've got fully qualified domain name. We've got the default networking information. You know, you've got a lot of information here. Some of it more useful than others. Um, but it's there, so we should use it. Um, so for custom facts, unlike Linux, if you want to create Windows facts, you need a PS1 file, which is a PowerShell script. And when Ansible runs, we're going to use the fact path option, and that, that's what runs the PS1 script in that directory. Um, and that's what makes the local facts available. So in this example, I'm going to be going to collect some AWS facts. Now, you know the, UR, the AWS URL for metadata. So what I'm doing is I've got a, a variable I'm declaring here. It's running this invoke rest method and you can click here in the gist and it'll take you to the page that explains all about that and all the different options you've got. And we're literally running an API call to, to fill up these variables with the information that's here. And then we're going to take those variables like instance type and we're going to add them in here. Um, for the rest of it, this section here, I've made it look like it looks on Linux. So this is the file name. This is the, the name of the facts, which is normally a square brackets around it. And then below are all the facts. And this is in exactly the right format it needs to be to work in Windows. Um, so if we want to call in these facts, we can um, 
I'll show you how to do this. So we can actually call individual facts back, which is really it's quite neat. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create a files directory, put this script into a file, and then push this to the server. So make directory files and vi files, and we're going to call it local.ps1. I just do set paste because I haven't set any options on my vi or vim. Okay, so that's in. Let's go for unit. Excuse my dog, he likes to bark sometimes. Um, so save the file, and then we also need to just create a new file. So instead of editing the windows.yaml file we've got, we're going to create a new one to keep this separate. So let's create a new file called localfacts.yaml. And in here, let's just do the set paste again. You don't have to do this probably. Delete all of this. Okay, so a standard playbook. Um, if you're running it as a role, well, we're not running it as a role. We're standing, running it as a playbook, so you, you'll, you'll, you'll understand. You better get your head around it. So we're running against any host that's in the Windows group. So my host is in a Windows group in the host.ini file. We're going to create a temp fax directory. Um, this here restricts it to only running on Windows. So if you're running this across servers that are multiple OSs, it, this will only get actioned on a Windows server. You, you probably don't need it. I've just added it in. Um, then we're going to use um, the win copy to copy over the local.ps1 file, the PowerShell script, and that's going to sit in the directory that we just created above. And then we're going to set our fact path, which is temp facts, and then we're going to register this variable, which when, when it runs, it'll collect um, the information. It'll, it'll run this local.ps1 in this directory and then add those facts to set the setup module. So let's save this. And then back here, we'll just run it. So let's just take this. If you've done it the same as me, you can just cut and paste this. If not, just make the local changes that you need to make to get it to run. This won't take too long. So this is just setting up the fact directory and then putting this PowerShell script into the fact directory that we created. Okay, that's finished. So now, just refresh, we've got temp. We now have a fact directory we didn't have before, and if we open this in Notepad, we can see that that is exactly what we, we asked it to send over. So I'm pleased that's working. So now we can collect those facts. So if we just use our fact path, so before we, you know, if you scroll, we, we, we just ran the setup module on its own. So now if we run the setup module, but we give it the fact path destination, that will point it towards our PowerShell script. So if we run this, now when Ansible runs and we run the setup module, we'll get a small section that contains the facts that we've just asked it to collect. And here they are. So we have Ansible local, we have local, local facts. And you can see that that all tallies in with the with what we've asked it to do, local, local facts. So, and we can see that it's picked up the AMI ID, it's picked up the fact it's a T2 small, and it's picked up the region. So that's exactly what we wanted. That's what we asked it to do, and it's done it for us. There's also some extra ones in here. I just added the fact it's AWS, UAT, and like a call out. And, and, and it's supported by the Windows team, just because um, sometimes you can use the support team as a call out. You know, you could use this local fact as a way of differentiating it between other environments. You know, you've got UAT here, maybe you want to do it on all prod or, new, or UAT or pre-prod whatever environment, then you can again use this to select just those servers in Ansible. So we can pull out a bit more. So if we just want to pull out just our facts, so instead of getting the big long list, let me do that again. So instead of having a big long list like we just did, we can be quite specific and just pull out the facts that we want. So there is this little set here that's for formatting with the um, curly brace. But this is everything in Ansible facts, Ansible local, local, local facts. So you can see the structure, it's sort of, it's sort of explanatory. Um, I didn't know that when I first worked with facts. I was trying to work out how, how I pull them out and then the penny dropped and I was away. So hopefully this has maybe saved you some pain. Um, we can take this one step further. We can then, at the end, you could do dot, say, 
availability zone. So let's get that back. There it is. Or maybe you want to use just environment. You know, it's the same thing. So pop that in there, run it. So now, now if you wanted to, you could control Ansible to only run against servers where it meets the, the UAT environment. Okay, so we've done all that. So now we're going to create a new fax one. So we're going to move on now and we're going to get a local fact from the remote server and put them in our file. So if we just create um, fax.text.ginger2. So there are a couple of ways to pull out fax. This is the older traditional way that people, if you're watching this, are probably familiar with, or you know. But this is the new way. So you have your, every, every, it's still the same, but instead of a dot, you have it encased in curly braces, and you just follow the same path, and it's exactly the same. Um, but this is kind of the more accepted new way. If you were going to choose one way to do it, I'd learn how to do it with this, because this potentially may well disappear at some point in the future. But they both work for now, so you have a choice. What we're going to do here is we're using both ways to collect the facts. We're going to collect the same facts. I'm just going to show you that both work, um, and we're going to get the same information in our file. So now that we've created the facts.text.ginger2, we need to add it to our local facts playbook. So if we just vi local facts, and then just put it in the bottom. So all we're doing is we're taking the facts.txt.changer2 that we just created and we're going to put it in the folder direct in the temp folder directory on our remote server. So we can see here that the only thing we have in is the foo.txt file at the moment from before. So let's save this and it should be just a simple matter of running. So let's just run this. And that'll put the file there and then it will generate it will run the local fact PowerShell script and then populate those facts for us, which will be quite nice. And we should look like this when it's finished. So this is the section, right, that's done it. And there it is, facts. And when we open it up, we can see they both work. They've both got the same ID and they've both got the same region. That's what we were expecting using the two different methods. So now we're going to add a local environment variable. So this is just a good, an easy way of extending it. Um, let's go back onto our server. Be either facts. Dot text. Dot ginger two, and we're going to add a line. And that line is going to be Ansible environment. Dot home path. So because it's Windows, I just pick that. It could be anything. Let's save this. And we're going to before I run it. We scroll back up we can see that there's a section here on ansible underscore emv which is an ansible environment and this is the local environment on the remote server and you know as you scroll down you can see there's loads of stuff i think i've picked home path so we should get slash user slash administrator out but i could have done dot any of this stuff any any of these things um so let's just run it and that should just update that Is it running Yep, we'll run that and that should just update this fax file with this extra setting. So we'll just wait and see what happens. It's about to run finish, there we go. So if we just update this, there, and there it is. So remote home path, which is what we've asked it to, asked it to, to give us, is now available in our fact file and this this could be any file you know it doesn't need to be this file it could be any file for any configuration any application you know it's just an example you know it could be any file um, so we do see that so it has worked and then step two again taking it in a bit further we're going to use a local variable on the control node so now what we have to do is we just have to add or we have to create this variable called shell let's do that so we have to do this in the local facts file. So at the top, 
under hosts, we're just gonna pop it in. That should work. So what this is doing, we, we want to create a variable called shell and we want it to we're gonna use the lookup function and it has to be an environment and environment of shell. So if I to help with you, if we just do env from the command line on Linux, you can see that shell is equal to bin bash. So we should get bin bash back out. But if I change it to user or to pwd or to any of these things, it would bring back what it the thing it, it matched in the environment. So we're going to leave it as shell. We should get bin bash back. Um, we need to add this to the fax.txt file. So that's our variable that we're just declaring. So we've added that. We've told it to generate, well, populate the shell variable. Should just be able to run it again, and it will update our file to have that extra line in it. Okay, so we'll let that run, and it should give us this output. So we're right near the end. Let's see what it's doing. Let's have a look. Yeah, and there it is. So we've, we've, we've collected local facts from the AWS API. We've collected a local environment variable and put that into a template. We've also collected a control, the control node, the Ansible control node variable, and we've put that in the template on a remote server as well. So it's versatile, it does a lot of stuff. It's actually really powerful. Um, and it can give you a lot of extra sort of options when you're running Ansible. So, you know, consider using this. And it, this works on Linux as well. Uh, I've got other videos for that. So just pop a comment in if you want. But, you know, consider subscribing. And it helps me out with the numbers. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.